I made this Han Solo blaster and I got to take it on board the Millennium Falcon. This is my take on the iconic Han Solo blaster from the Star Wars movies. This is something I've wanted since I was a kid, and it is so cool to have it in my hand now. Something that looks and feels real, not like a toy. Stick around to the very end. I'll show you how I got a chance to take this on board the Millennium Falcon. I've been collecting pieces for this for a while. The base is an airsoft gun, a broom handle Mauser. It's plastic and pretty lightweight, so the first thing I did was take it apart. I also popped off the plastic handle grips. I'll be replacing those later. I hot glued some nuts into the handle to give it some extra heft, being careful not to block any of the mechanism or any of the screw holes. The barrel came in two pieces, so I roughed up the plastic and super glued those two together permanently. Next, it was time for paint prep. I scuffed the surface with some sandpaper and used a matte black spray paint specifically for plastic to get one uniform color. Next for the handle, I traced the old handles onto a piece of walnut. After getting those pieces the right thickness, I used double-sided tape to stick the two blanks together. I started cutting them into shape first with my jigsaw and actually used a coping saw to finish the cut because it was getting a little tough to hold in the vise. If I had a band saw, this would have been so much easier. Then it was time to start sanding the handles. First, I used a cheap strip sander to take them down to the layout line. Then I began to round them over with a flat disc on my angle grinder so they had more of the shape of the original. The broom handle Mauser has a very round handle. I didn't go that extreme because I wanted something a little beefier in my hand. Some finished sanding, then I laid out the holes and did my final fitting on the blaster. Here you can see the chunkier wooden handles I made laid out next to the really rounded originals. I finished them with some boiled linseed oil which really darkened up the wood beautifully. I bought this, I don't know what you'd call it, nose cone or flash suppressor on eBay a couple years ago. It's machined aluminum, very nice, very heavy, but way too shiny for a grungy space blaster. So I hit it with Jack's Aluminum Blackener. I'll have a link to the products down in the description. There are several little bits tacked onto the blaster on the original there are what look like cooling fins, so I picked up this computer heat sink. It's square and chunky, and I wanted it more streamlined, so I shaped it with the strip sander and some files until I got it looking how I wanted. I blackened this aluminum too. One of the most recognizable pieces is the big scope that hangs off the blaster. It needs a mounting plate, so I started laying that out. This is a real scope that I picked up on eBay, trying to find something that was roughly the right size. Again, not an exact match. This is just my variation on this blaster. Once the rough shape of the bracket was sketched out, I taped it onto an aluminum sheet and rough cut it off camera. Aluminum cuts easy with most woodworking saws. Then I put it in my vise and began gently bending it into shape. You'll see in a minute, the scope plate is dog leg. To set it off in the blaster body, so it required two kind of complementary bends. I rounded off the corners, then started thinking about where I was going to mount it on the blaster. I didn't want it to interfere with the trigger mechanism, so I marked for holes where I thought they'd do the least damage to the blaster guts. I drilled those holes out on the aluminum, then marked the same spots on the blaster body and slowly drilled all the way through the plastic. Next, it was time to figure out how to mount the scope to the plate. The scope was made to mount on a real rifle, so I used a thin piece of aluminum to recreate the rail system that would be on a real rifle. It's beveled on each edge, so the scope mount clips grab a hold of it. I figured out where I wanted this on the scope plate and then decided I didn't like the look of the solid plate, so I laid out an opening on it. I drilled some starter holes, then opened it up with a metal cutting disc on my rotary tool and cleaned up the cut into its final shape with a sanding wheel and some files. The plate and the rail both got hit with blackener too, and the next day, it was finally time to start wrapping things up. I riveted the rail to the scope plate with some washers behind it to make sure I had enough clearance for the scope rails. I picked up some awesome screws at the hardware store along with thumb nuts, but they were a little too long, so I cut those down. 
I knocked some of the shine off the scope as well so it looked a little more grimy. Now at this point I was really getting excited because I had most of the pieces all kind of laid out how I wanted them. It was just time to start putting things together and I really resisted putting pieces on this until the very end because I really just wanted to wait and see it all together at once. I roughed up the plastic on all the spots that were going to have things attached with epoxy. I attached the handles with epoxy, then the cooling fins, using clamps and tape to hold it in place while it dried. When it was all dry, I weathered it with a dry brush of silver metallic paint in spots, hitting it in other areas with steel wool to kind of scuff it up. I wanted this to look used and abused. Finally time to put it all together and I have never been happier with anything that I have made. I also added this piece here which might be a little difficult to see. It's actually a barge cement cap that I shortened up and stuck on the side, just another greebly to give it a little more character. Again, this is not screen accurate. Anybody who is totally into Star Wars prop reproductions is gonna be able to spot this thing a mile away, but there are a ton of variations in the Star Wars movies of this weapon. I feel okay kind of taking my own liberties with it and making my own version. I am really in love with this project. A couple days after I finished it, Lucasfilm brought a kind of replica of the inside of the Millennium Falcon to my area. It's a promotional tour for Solo, a Star Wars story. It was just awesome to walk inside and check it out, even if it was the cleaner, shinier Lando version of the Falcon. The best part is I got to take some shots of my DL-44 on the hollow chest table and in the cockpit too. Like, subscribe, comment, take the time to tell me what you think about this. I really hope this inspires you to make something. If there is something you want, try to make it yourself. You are really going to value it so much more than anything that you could buy. Thanks for taking the time to watch. And remember, Han shot first.